Hey gang, welcome back. I want to take a quick minute to have a very brief discussion. I got my little mittens on today. I actually bought these at, uh, what's it called? Not Port Arthur. Dang it. <clears throat> there was a Civil War reenactment where the, is it Fort Hudson? I think it's Fort Hudson. I bought these in uh, Louisiana. Uh, so they're genuine Confederate mittens. Anyway, so don't let the waving hands distract you. I wanted to talk to you briefly about Washington's Crossing. And uh, I recently picked it up from Revolution Games. Uh, it was on sale and I picked it up with uh, a couple of other titles from there. And I just finished goofing around with it a little bit uh, and playing a couple of turns. I've posted a little bit of video on uh, going through some of the motions with the game. And, and I've stopped for now, uh, not because I don't like the title or anything like that, but more because uh, <clears throat> I don't think I'm in the frame of mind to do the work that needs to be done with, with the game. Uh, it's a, there, are, there are two different things that are making the experience uh, ch challenging. First is the game, part of the gameplay is really cool in that it has, uh, there are a lot of, there's a lot of variable aspects to the game. So whether it be movement, uh, the, the impact of surprise rolls, uh, the way combat is calculated, uh, the number of units that you can activate in a given turn, your fatigue level, things like that. There, are, there is certainly a, a significant number of variable aspects to the game, which make it very interesting and probably be a great replay value. Uh, that, that's all good. There's also a uh, an aspect to it that there's a lot of pa what I would call paperwork. Uh, I, as I was playing, I felt compelled to be, and this may just be a familiarity for me, or that familiarity thing, where you need, once you're familiar with the order of uh, where all the leaders are on the charts that you're looking at and, and, and you know, their, their numbers, uh, you better look them up more rapidly. When you're rolling to see what your movement rate is, you, you know, maybe you'll be uh, able to keep track of that a little easier. Uh, but there's a lot of... Uh, counting and tracking of numbers and all the rest of it that there are, no, there are no tracks for them and there's no movement point numbers that I can, anything I can use, a counter that I can use to keep track of, uh, of movement points for instance. So <clears throat> since every turn, every unit can have a different movement rate, you're constantly needing to make a note, okay Washington has nine movement points this turn and all the leaders that are going to move with him are going to have the same amount, or am I going to split this guy off, and do I need to roll for him, and then how many movement points does he have, and how far is he going to go, and all of that's fantastic, and it's really cool, and I think it has a lot of value to the game, but administratively, there's no tools within the game to help you do manage that. You know, uh, if there were little counters that had perhaps, you know, not one through nine, or whatever the range of movement points is, uh, you know, uh, so I can put a counter underneath it, and at least I can just not. I don't know whether I'm going to flip it over or not, or rotate it, or something like that. So I can at least keep track of that. That'd be cool. Uh, having a table with all of the combat units on it, and you know how many men I have. That's interesting too. I, I like that. But if I've got a stack of four leaders, I've got to identif identify the leaders, find where they are on the chart tally up their number, write it down somewhere, get all the other guys, tally up, look at them, write all of them down, tell, get a total. And then uh, then you know, I go through my combat exercise, take the losses and spread them across however many leaders I want to spread them across. So there's lot, lots of little fiddly things in it that, that detract from the game experience and I've found myself getting becoming more uh, frustrated with that exercise uh, than I was enjoying the enjoying the experience. Hang on one second. I said turn the heat it down a little bit. Uh, so, so I was kind of I was kind of disappointed because I was really looking forward to this being my first American Revolution, you know, more serious game. It is a serious game. I think it's a a war gamers game. It's not 
introductory by any means, and it's certainly not for beginners. Uh, it does have a lot of history with uh, Kevin Zucker. Uh, you can see the influence of the Napoleonic line of battle uh, rule system in the game, and I think that's cool. Uh, that, uh, but but where he's taken things uh, a significant step forward is really enhanced or developed specific to the American Revolution, the combat system. And uh, the combat system is actually really kind of cool, it's just not laid out real well. Uh, I actually cheated and used, uh, sorry, I just cheated and used a, uh, a little spreadsheet uh, to kind of run through all the combats just to make it a, a little simpler. Because by the time you've done, you're done rolling for how many movement points you get for the turn and working out uh, how many activ activation points you're going to use per leader and for which leaders and which sub-leaders are going to activate guys and then keep track of moving all those guys and you come to doing the combat there are two or three or four die rolls the two or three it's probably only two uh, no maybe three die rolls for uh, for combat so I used a little spreadsheet and that made it great uh, that sped up that whole exercise and made that very efficient unfortunately that means I've got to play this thing this game right by my PC and and that kind of changes the, uh, the equation a little bit if I could break out a laptop I suppose but I'm not going to do that anyway I'm going to table this game to be played again at uh, some other point in the future. Uh, I think it's keeper. I think I'd like to keep it because it is, uh, it does take a very specific battle and very specific set of circumstances and very, uh, I won't say it's unique, but a uh, uh, certainly a defining point in American history and covers it really well and it gives you a great flavor for what was going on at the time. My only concern is that I've got to do an awful lot of work to get that experience out of the game. And while I'm happy to do work for games to get that story out of it, uh, I am fighting with the system at the moment. So I think uh, it might be a game that might be played well opposed uh, versus uh, solo. And it might be a game that uh, I'll appreciate a little bit more when I'm in a perhaps a, a, a little more uh, congenial mood for uh, for games that, that are a little more involved. All right, that's all I have to say about Washington's Crossing. That's uh, from Revolution Revolution Games. Keep in mind this is not a review, it's just my initial impressions. And very early, I haven't even played a full game yet, uh, but I certainly will get to do that at some point, and I'm looking forward to it. So take it easy, and find something cool about this game that you uh, think you should share with me then let me know because I'd like to hear your comments and views on on this title it's got uh, it's got lots of potential I think I'm curious to see if this will become a series or whether it was a one-off all right later please stop now hurry stop where's the button